the day started, well, when the weekend came, I was down to where I thought there was going to be three of us on the platform. And so I said, Lord, he said, what? I said, I know we can do it with three. ZZ Top did it with three. <laughs> but we're not ZZ Top. None of us have beards. And some of us have no hair. And so it's very difficult to do that. But he said this to me. I never, I, you know, Thursday during Thanksgiving, he said, just wait upon me. I'll take care of this. Just wait upon me. He has never, ever, ever failed me, church. I've failed myself hundreds of times. I don't know about you. Thousands of times I have failed myself. And a thousand times I probably didn't know why Jesus did what he did for me in the midst of those times of hopelessness. All I know is that when it comes to things of hope, the next, he doesn't fail us. And you know, our, our faith was put to the task this week when it came to baby Emmett. Um, and I'd have people text me or email or ask me why. I, I don't know why. I don't know why the Lord felt the need to take little Enoch then, and I didn't know why he chose to take Emmett now. All I know is that he's there, and I know he's with the Lord, and I know all things are good. His sickness is gone. His collapsed lung is restored. His vital organs that have been infected are now uninfected. And that's the hope that we have. Knowing that God takes care of him. Knowing that God is, knowing that Jesus came himself. He personally, I believe this with all my heart. He personally came himself and took the baby home. I believe that with little ones. I believe that with babies. I mean, they're not even old enough to know how to go or enter the gate. Or to walk the road of eternity. That's why baby dedications are so important. Here, Lord, thank you. Thank you for blessing us with this incredible gift, but we realize you're the one that blessed us with him. And, Lord, we also, the hardest thing for us to do is to surrender him and them to, to Jesus. But it is what he asks of us. He, he asks us to do these things. And our, our hope comes in knowing that he's good at his promises. And one of the things he promised was on a hill far away. No, that was a promise. But also in Luke chapter 2, we find the promise of God when we're told that there were shepherds living in the fields nearby. Now, I want you to pay attention to this passage because we always kind of jump over the, the shepherds. We kind of pass them up. Once the angels came to them and they went to Bethlehem and they saw this thing that had happened, they kind of, that's kind of the end of their story, but it's not the end of the story. As a matter of fact, I say for you today, it is the beginning of the story. And the shepherds were a must at the Bethlehem manger scene. The, the shepherds had to be there that first Christmas morning. And so the angel of the Lord, he appeared to them. I love this next phrase. And they were terrified. Yeah, that'd be an understatement. If you saw the mighty angels of God on that dark Judean hillside, the light that must have emanated from them would have scared any of us. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Because today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He is God's anointed one. He is the long-awaited Messiah. He is the one that the Father promised he would send at just the right time. At the fullness of time, he would send him. So God sent his one and only son, who we know as the Lord, who became the bridge, the one who bridged the chasm between God and his creation. And on that day, some 2,000 years ago, the hope for mankind was established there in the manger. A future for mankind was now being proclaimed. It was going to be proclaimed on that night outside on the little hill 
outside of Judea in the town of Bethlehem. And then it was going to be proclaimed from that point forward for all of times. And these shepherds would be the first ones to hear about this hope. And thus they were going to be the first ones to carry this hope to a world. Did you ever think about that? They come to Bethlehem and they, and they see this baby. The angel said it was the Lord himself, the long-awaited Messiah. And then it seems like the shepherds, it, it just ends there. And we don't really see or hear much about them after that. So as we begin this Christmas journey, I want you, I want you to listen. I want, I want us to take an up-close and personal look at the shepherds. That's our focus today, is the shepherds. Those who were there that first Christmas morning, those who would experience personally, intimately, the heart of God himself as he touched their very lives with the good news that would bring great joy for all people. The question that I asked myself years ago was, could he have not shown up to anyone else? I mean, he basically revealed himself to the wise men with the star. But why did he pick these shepherds? Why didn't he pick town folk like us? Why didn't he pick just someone who, I don't know. But then as I studied the story, as I started looking deeper into the story, I started to ask myself this question. Mary, Joseph, the baby, three kings, and then shepherds. But he didn't say how many. I found that interesting. I found that enlightening. I thought to myself, well, why, why didn't he say three shepherds? Why didn't he say two shepherds? Why didn't he say a group of shepherds and, and tell us how many there were? And then I came to realize that he couldn't tell us because he didn't know. He did not know how many shepherds were going to come out of that time. And for all generations' sake, a shepherd is described as a caretaker. A servant of God, one who provides, protects, and guides sheep. Think about it. Think about it for a moment, what a, sh what a shepherd does, what a shepherd did for the sheep, and what shepherds do today for the congregation of Jesus Christ. See, when I look about this and I think about this, it wasn't a coincidence. It was providential. It was God's plan that he chose these shepherds to be there that first Christmas to announce to them the coming of his one and only son and ask him to go see this thing that had happened. Go see this thing that had happened because this is going to be important for all history. For all times, this is going to be important. What you do is vital. So think about it. Sheep were and are known for their meekness, that means being needy, and sheep easily lose sight of where they are going, so they need direction, and sheep have a serious need for leadership to guide them in that direction. Enter the shepherds of the first Christmas. The whole thing began there. The whole thing started there. The whole thing was about... God sending his son and beginning this process on earth through the life of Mary and Joseph with these shepherds. However many there were, we knew that the shepherds were there. As a matter of fact, in Ezekiel 34, John 10, John 21, we're told that we, believers in Christ Jesus, we are his sheep. And Jesus proclaimed himself the good shepherd. He proclaimed himself the good shepherd who would keep watch over the father's sheep, those who believe upon him. It says that he would provide for him, he would protect him, and he would guide these wayward sheep back to the father. Biblically speaking, and that's what I like to do is biblically speak on topics like this, but bi biblically speaking, Jesus identified his sheep and their need for ministering shepherds, for servant shepherds, for pastor shepherds. Jesus identified this. 
He said the individuals need this in their life. What he was speaking about actually was uh, some kind of spiritual authority, some kind of spiritual hierarchy, kind of this is the way, this is what we're supposed to know, and this is what we're supposed to be doing. To paraphrase Acts chapter 20, listen to this. We're told that as believers, as sheep, we must not hesitate to proclaim to the whole the whole will of God the Father. We are to keep watch over ourselves and all the flock. We are to keep watch over one another. And then he finishes with this statement. Be shepherds of my church. Be shepherds of my church. Yeah, he was talking to me. Pastor Eva. Pastor Josh, Pastor Eli. But he was talking to more than just us four. He was talking to all of us, all who believe upon the name of Jesus Christ. See, God had a plan on how to extend this message, this good news of great joy, which was hope for all of creation and how to plan it in the heart of all creation. It was a plan that existed from the beginning of time. It was a plan that came at a time when them shepherds were sitting on that hillside and the angel of the Lord came to them, spoke to them, and then sent them through shepherds, that is pastor ministers, Those who would proclaim the word of God. Those who would preach and teach the word of God. But also servant shepherds. Acts is really clear about this. That he sends servant shepherds to be Jesus to the world. Acts chapter 20 identifies for us these ministering shepherds, these pastors. But it also identifies the servant shepherd. You. Those in the body of Christ. Servant shepherds who have been given this charge, keep watch over his flock. Keep watch over one another. This is our calling. This is our job. This is our duty. This is our mission to fulfill the mandate of of God, that is salvation through Jesus Christ, his one and only son, the Christ of Christmas, the babe of Bethlehem. It takes all of us, not just four of us. Four. Four. But it takes all. It takes more than four. It takes all of us to keep watch over one another and to be shepherds of the church. Seriously, think about this. Did you ever notice that Luke never mentions how many shepherds there were? I mean, everybody else has a number. Everybody else is mentioned, but not these shepherds. Not at this present time. And there's a reason Luke didn't tell us. Did you know Luke had a good reason why he never mentioned the number of shepherds? It's right there. It's in the story of Luke chapter 2, 8 through 14. But sometimes we miss the most important things. Or maybe sometimes we ignore some of the most important things of God. Because when we examine the roles of the shepherds in the Christmas story, one very important thing jumps out at us. Well, maybe not jumps out, but it's there. It's right there in verse 11 that the shepherds were given charge to share the good news of great joy, which would be hope for all people. Creation had a need for a savior because of sin and the grip of death. So God sent his son. Creation had need for someone to keep watch, to teach, to proclaim this hope throughout all generations. Enter the pastor shepherd. And then God needed someone to take it beyond the four walls of his church and share it with others. Enter you, the servant shepherd. It's our call. It's the mission. It's the mission that fulfills the mandate that was given 2,000 years ago in the little town of Bethlehem in some stinking dark manger where I'm sure Mary and Joseph weren't feeling very hopeful when there was no room in the inn and they were told to go out into the manger, into the stable. I wonder what Mary felt when she sat down there ready to deliver 
in that dark, stinking stable. Every once in a while, I have a parent say to me two things. Number one, I, I want to have a child, a baby, but I can't possibly consider bringing a child into this fallen world in the way it is now. I hear that from people from time to time. And then I hear from people that would say to me, wow, I, I don't know what's going to be in the future for my child. I mean, look at the world around us. It's an absolute mess. What's going to be there for my child? Well, the answer is the same answer as the first person, Jesus. He was there before, he's there now, and he'll be there forever. He is our hope. He is the one that we lean on. He is the one that we go to. He is the one <laughs> that entrusted us with a hope for the world. Church, our world still has need for someone to share this powerful message of the good news of hope that brings joy to all people. We are still in a world that needs that. So there they were at that first Christmas, and here we are at this Christmas, gathered together to celebrate the Christ, born of a manger, and there, they received their calling. And here, today, we receive our calling to be pastors, to be servant shepherds, to carry the hope that is in Christ Jesus to our world. What did these ragtag, motley group of individuals see that first, thir that first Christmas morning? They saw what we are trying to witness today, hope in a new world. These were not individuals of prominence. They were not individuals of intellectual prowess. They were not individuals of pedigrees or status in social society. They weren't a part of the elite group. But by all accounts, when you study shepherds, they were individuals that were often behind the scenes, in the shadow of what was really happening at that time which again, I believe God purposely used them for us here today. Yet these shepherds, they were called that first Christmas to share God's news of hope as we are called today. Remember I, t I asked you the question, I told you Luke never mentions the number of shepherds at that manger scene, but, but the answer is, how could he? How could he tell us how many shepherds would be carrying the hope of God that is in Christ Jesus to the world? How could he? He didn't know that number. That number didn't exist, especially in light of Acts chapter 20. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers of, so be Shepherds of my church. It doesn't say be Christians. It doesn't say be believers. It simply says be shepherds of my church. Pastor shepherds. Those who would share God's story of hope to a lost world proclaiming Jesus as the reason for the season and for all seasons. And then servant shepherds, that is you, who were given charge to keep watch over those around you. To be that good news of great joy to our world that is in Christ Jesus, which is the promised hope, which is the hope of a tomorrow. What we see here today in this room, in the sanctuary, is exactly what was being played out to the world that first Christmas. That there will be shepherds. There will be people who encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that encounter, they will experience a joy and a hope like the world has never experienced before. And then... 
these pastor shepherds are to share this reason to the servant shepherds so that you who were given the charge to keep watch will go into the world. What we see here today in this room is exactly what was being played out in the world that first Christmas, that there will be shepherds. There will be many shepherds. There will be those people, those believers of God who would tell his story to the world. Amen. (laughs) You realize that's why Luke never mentioned how many there were? How could he possibly know how many shepherds were going to come out of that manger scene? How many shepherds were going to come as a result of those first shepherds to our world? There's no way Luke knew. There's no way we know. And that's why Luke never mentioned how many were there. I mean, seriously, how could he? How many shepherds have existed between the time of Bethlehem and the birth of God's one and only son and today? How many shepherds exist? How many pastoral shepherds? How many servant shepherds? How many exist today between those two periods of time? We don't know. Luke didn't know. And that's why Luke never said, but today... God is saying it to you. You are my shepherds. Keep watch over one another and of yourself. That's, you know that's perfect timing. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> because it was a baby that called us to the mission. Amen? So as our praise and worship team makes their way back up to the platform, I want you to consider your part in the Christmas story. I want you to consider your part at the manger and beyond. I want you to consider why Luke never mentioned how many shepherds there were because he couldn't. He didn't know. I don't know. We don't know. We just know that he called shepherds, pastoral shepherds, and ministry shepherds to go into the world And to be hope to all. Creation has a need still today for a Savior. We know His Son. Creation still has a need for shepherds. Will you be one? And servant shepherd, the call is for you today. A call that began that first Christmas 2,000 years ago. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want you to absorb that for a moment. Before we do anything else, before we go any further, you've heard the story. Oh, man, how many times have you seen it played out? How many times have you sang the songs at Christmas? How many messages, sermons, lessons have you heard? How often have we taken what the Lord said to us and passed it off on to another? Hoping that four is enough. But more is better. More is always better. Creation needed a Savior. God sent His Son. His son, he needed shepherds. So he calls upon each one. In the quietness of this moment, what's your part? Am I calling you to preach? Am I calling you to teach? Am I calling you to evangelize? Am I calling you to missions? calling you to be you and it's not my call it's his calling will you go to the world in need of hope 